Good morning. We would like to welcome all of you to St. Edward today. If you are new to our parish and would like to become a registered parishioner, you can pick up a registration form in the vestibule, go online, or stop by the parish office. We also welcome all our live stream viewers who are with us today. For our non-Catholic brothers and sisters, and for those unable to receive communion, you may come forward at communion to receive a prayer. We use this gesture. For our non if you cannot walk up to receive communion, please ask one of the hospitality ministers in the back, and they will see that communion is brought to you. We have child care available during the 1030 Sunday Mass over in the parish hall nursery. Please rise and join us in our opening hymn, How Can I Keep From Singing? Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with well, happy Mother's Day, and I'm, I'm supposed to say happy Godmother's Day also, and uh, it's also a good Shepherd Sunday. They kind of go together, you know. We think of a shepherd as being Jesus, of course, but all of us are called to shepherd others by our words and deeds, and today we hear the, we're supposed to hear the voice of the shepherd, so sometimes we listen to other voices, and it, it ends up offending God or others, so we begin by acknowledging our sins and his mercy as well. You are the good shepherd of the sheep, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You call us to listen to your voice, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You offered your life on the cross for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on to Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. <coughs> Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of the God. The following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse con contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you rejected it, and condemned yourselves as unworthy for eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirring up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are his people, 
Reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will worship them will shepherd them and lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sheep hear my voice, and I give them eternal life. One thing about shepherds from that era, 2,000 years ago, it was a very common profession, and the lowest profession we know from uh, Bethlehem, that our Lord chose the least job to be the first to hear the, the uh, good news. But the, in that era, in that place, which is a Mediterranean climate, the things that grow the best are olive trees and drought-resistant things. It's the same climate as Los Angeles and a few places, obviously Mediterranean, one place in Australia. Very, very rare climate with very little rain. So the shepherds would go out for a long time they wouldn't come back. They would be with the sheep for quite a while. They took on the 
this sounds awful, the smell of the sheep, which is probably why they didn't call them too often, and they, they would also let the sheep get accustomed to their voice. And then the voice, whenever they called, the sheep would come. And this is what they did. They would even, when they put them someplace for the evening, he, the, the shepherd would, would place himself in front of the cave or wherever they were, and then the sheep would not go over him. So this is, this is why Jesus uses this image of a shepherd. The sheep, of course, is not the smartest animal in the pen, you know. I don't know what the meaning is of that in reference to us, but, you know, sometimes without Jesus' voice, we can find all kinds of ways that don't lead us to eternal life, but can lead us off the right path. So we have to ask ourselves, how do we hear his voice? Well, if we, if the Holy Spirit will be guiding us and leading us and through church teaching, through the scriptures, and through our hopefully well-informed conscience, and then through the incidents of life. And this is how God speaks. He very rarely appears in person to anybody. Uh, if you've had that experience, please see me after Mass. I'd like to hear from you. But uh, this kind of thing, if you've seen the, the movie um, um, Father Stu, is, is in, in there about that. But uh, not exactly giving that a plug, but I, I hear that that's, was that part of that. But anyway, we hear the, if we hear the Holy Spirit and we follow it, we'll begin to hear it more and more. If we turn away from God's voice, we'll become less and less able to hear him. And that's a truism. God likes to speak on a certain wavelength with each person. With me, I often hear him in coincidences, which aren't coincidences at all. Uh, you know, I've often said I often get to a sickbed at around 3 o'clock. That's not, I don't plan it, but when I see it, I know God's showing particular mercy on someone. I recognize that, that coincidence, and God uses it a lot in my ministry. Well, I had an interesting week speaking of that. This week, uh, I had a, a sick call, which was rather urgent, and so I went in the closet. You know, during COVID, I don't know about you, but having no control over anything, I clean closets, you know? Did anybody do that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a family tradition, and planted things in the backyard and that sort of thing. You know, you want to have control over something in your life. And Easter with 10 people in here, I cleaned every closet after, after Easter Sunday. So I had this, this closet that took almost all day to clean, you know, it, the main closet. And our family used to play Tripoli and, and poker when we had people living, like about 20 would get together at Easter and Christmas and Fourth of July and stuff. And so we had, uh, my parents had about 1,000 poker chips, which I've never used in 40 years. Well, I pulled the wrong, the wrong cloth, and 1,000 poker chips landed in my, in my closet where I spent that day cleaning. <laughs> They're still laying all over the floor. And I said to the Lord, okay, who sinned? Me, my mother, or my grandmother? You know, like the Jewish thing. I, I, he said, it's not my fault you did that. <laughs> it's like, so, you know, we have God's active will and his permissive will. The active will is when God actually places things in our path. His permissive will is when we suffer. He doesn't will that we suffer, but he uses it to good, just like his own son. So we, we know that we're going to go up and down in the valleys and the hills, like Psalm 23 we heard in singing. And it, it, this is the, the way God leads us. He doesn't just always lead us to green pastures. We have to go through something, as I've said many times. So anyway, having passed that test, you know, if you, if you pass one bar, he raises it. You know, you're never finished. I should have failed that test and I would have gotten out of this. So, I, you know, when we built this church eight and a half years ago, these, these things came in at 3 a.m. because they took up all of River Road to get here. If you think about how wide this would be. And it, they came in one at a time from Oregon City. It was very interesting. When the White Cross was put up, which was before that, they also brought that in in the middle of the night. It took up one half of River Road. So you wouldn't want to go through it in the daytime. So it's 10.30 in the morning. I'm headed, uh, I, think to, I think I was going to um, uh, West Salem. And in front of me, you know, I'm always complaining about trains, the three the infamous Salem trains. I got behind a swimming pool. <laughs> I kid you not. It took up the entire two and a half lanes. It was right around where Ross used to be, and this thing's going down River Road at about five miles an hour at 10.30 in the morning. It was the same day. 
And I said, okay, Lord, who sinned? Me, my mother, my grandmother. I was like, what do you do? You have to let go. It was God's progressive will, I suppose. Maybe his active will. If I get the message and be less pa more patient, maybe it would stop happening. Then it made a right turn. That was interesting. I don't know what it was, but it was huge. Uh, a big koi pond or something. I don't, maybe it was going to the park down at the end. That's probably what it was. Uh, but anyway, God's... When you, an example of his active will, which we didn't, often we don't recognize it till it's over. So we ought to start praising the Lord before we see what it means. And this, is, this God will often not explain himself and see if we follow him. We've been in prayer for a long time, we really enjoy it, and then suddenly everything's like dust. I, we can't hear or see God. It's just, you know, we're, we're distracted. And if we give up, that means we need to be bribed to follow him, the good shepherd. The good shepherd promises us eternal life. He doesn't promise us a straight path. He promises us the cross, and without that, we won't learn. And that's what life is. We all have to go through this, and the good shepherd will lead us. We have to ask, so what voice am I listening to? The world doesn't know where it's going. It's, it leads to either nothing, selfishness, or maybe off a cliff at some point. And we, the good shepherd, on the other hand, knows that we're eternal on the inside and wants to lead us to eternal life. That's his goal in our life. Each of us is a unique human being that is, um, is destined for a place, specific place in heaven that will depend on how much we say yes to him now. So an example of his active will it certainly was true in my priesthood. You know, I had a legitimate choice between my career and this. They looked equal. Of course, they weren't equal at all. But it did at the time of the choice, it was really most of the chips were on, on, on the other side. I had to take a leap of faith. St. Ignatius points out the right way to discern what are the fruits of my decision. So you walk with God before you make a major decision in your mind alone, pick a, pick a nice desolate spot like the beach, or I like to think of the Scottish Highlands, you're just walking along, you and Jesus, it's all over, what decision do you wish you had made? Or, you talk with Jesus, look, um, I prayed for health and I got sickness, I prayed for this and I got that, what gives? You know what he's going to say? Trust me, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I don't like that, I don't like that answer, but, but then later comes. I look at the missionaries, Holy Spirit, in, I mean, missionaries, excuse me, that's another group, the family of Mary. You know, they came here for a mission, as you all know, and then by one thing led to another due to close downs in Europe, and then in Iowa, where they'd gone, they called and said, uh, can we come back there, because we were still open. And they, they liked the Adoration Chapel and the, and the hotel. They had money from the collection that they had taken, so they came back. And then we closed down, and we had them here for four months. And in that time, they broadcast all over the place. We had thousands of people watching, and they, so much good work came out of that. Nobody noticed it was God planning the whole thing. And then, uh, to make a long story short, of course, they're taking a parish here because of that. And there, some parish can be incredibly blessed by these guys. We don't know quite where it is. I have a good guess, but I won't tell you. Um, after Mass, I, you know, we're looking for money, so give me money. I'll, I might, he might get it out of me. <laughs> oh, no, no. Archbishop, I'm just kidding. Uh, he might be watching. Uh, I'm really kidding. I don't really know, but, but anyway, hearing the voice of the shepherd, the more we say yes to him, the easier it gets to hear him. It doesn't get easier to follow him. The wave, what wavelength does God speak to you? It's often our families. It might be the, hopefully the readings at Mass. We had three of them. I'm only preaching on one of them. But we see that great crowd of witnesses at the end of time. And hopefully all of us will be there and we'll remember these readings. And we'll say, oh, what a surprise. And you say, what surprise? I read it to you every year. That's the goal. The goal is not on earth. Thank God. If, th if this earth is the only hope we have, it's going to be a pretty desolate journey. But our hope is in heaven, and from there we await our Savior, Christ the Lord. While we're headed there, we are called to learn, to grow, and to serve. Not to be selfish, but to be selfless. And that's, uh, that, that's what the auction was all about last night. There's just a thousands of ways to do it. And Christ will lead you to your particular offering that you are called to do. And all of us at Mass here are offering everything together at the Eucharist to God 
all our particular life's journeys, and we thank God. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I lead them to eternal life. Amen. Stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world together. Amen. We honor Christ the Good Shepherd, and we pray. For the Church, may God pour out his grace on each of us to be his faithful followers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For policymakers, may the Holy Spirit move their hearts in enacting policies that support life from conception through natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the Lord help us grow in reverence and awe, particularly for the gift of the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill and struggling with their pain, may God's grace bring them comfort and relief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they come to share in the fullness of eternal life with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our prayer chain and for all other petitions we hold quietly in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for all of our youth who are receiving confirmation this Friday at Queen of Peace that the Holy Spirit may guide them throughout their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Christ, our Good Shepherd. Help us to listen to him and so find you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's means, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, 
Alexander, our bishop, and Peter, our assistant bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. As we walk your ways with faith and hope, may we strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Edward, St. Clair, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer our neighbor the sign of peace. Oh, no. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you, never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated briefly for the announcements. Bible study with Brad will continue this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. in the parish hall. Come pray the Patriotic Rosary on Monday, May 9th at 6.30 p.m. Join others as they pray for our nation. St. Germain Pregnancy Support Center is holding their baby bottle fundraiser this weekend. If you did not get one on your way in, stop by their table on the way out. Attention all you happy hearts. You are all invited to a delicious lunch next Friday the 13th, yes, it's Friday the 13th, after the noon mass. Enjoy some great fellowship. We have Mother's Day cards in the vestibule. These cards will be placed on the altar during the month of May. Mark your calendars for the next Red Cross blood drive. It will be on Thursday, May 26th, at 12.30 p.m. Information in the bulletin. And I only have a slight update from the auction because we were still, people were still giving the credit cards and stuff at about 10 o'clock last night. However, um, I was told that this auction was a record setter. The, the gross is going to be somewhere around $48,000, so it was really amazing last night. And we'll have the figures in the uh, bulletin, not, probably not this week because it, it gets sent up on Monday afternoon. But uh, the other, so that we're going to be redoing, for those of you who weren't there, uh, we're going to be re replacing the hall floor. It's 40 years old, and it uh, was, we, when we redid the hall some years ago, we couldn't afford to do the floor, and it's really icky. So we're redoing that. We, that was, we raised $18,000 for that, so that's going to be great. And then um, also, I, uh, my, I raffled off a, a bunco party. There's 50 of us going to that, so that ought to be fun. And it was just a great evening all around, and thanks to all of you who made it possible. And other than that, may the mothers please stand for a blessing. I'm supposed to say, and Godmother, so how about that? Heavenly Father, we thank you for our families, especially thank you for our mothers, both living and those who are with you. We pray that you will bless every family represented here and teach us all to have to invite you into our families. We can be one with your family. Forever in heaven we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the rest of you can stand. I forgot to everybody else stand at the last Mass, so I've gotten better. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, Archangel defend us in battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking souls. Amen.